image, and then it'll go through the penis and then out to the, the ex external world. A lot of times they'll refer to this region as the, the penile portion of the urethra, but the urethra is just the flow that basically urine follows to get outside of the body. So that will be underneath there. So yeah, same thing in the female. Um, it's just obviously we're going through different organs. Um, so if we pull this part off, um, it almost looks like there's two sort of bladder looking things right here. This is going to be the urinary bladder for the female. This is going to be the uterus right there. Mm. So uterus is always posterior to the bladder. So it's always in the female bladder, uterus, and then this is the rectum right there. Always in that order. Um, and in the female, it's a much shorter uh, urethra because they don't have the penis to, to go through. Right. Um, so it tends to be shorter. It also tends to be wider in terms of diameter. So it tends to be just wider, which is why females tend to get urinary tracts more than, than men usually do. Because in men, it's a much longer, narrower pathway, so it's harder for the bacteria to sort of work their way up there. Um, it's the same reason why, why females typically don't get bladder stones as easily as men do. Because when females start to develop the stones, they have a better shot of being able to void them out in their urine because it's a bigger right. canal. They're less likely to get hung up on the way out. Um, so it's sort of good and bad depending on how you look at um, sort of the overall shape of the, the urethra. But yeah, so that's going to be it in the female. Um, so uterus is going to be, this is the uterine body right here. This is going to be vagina right there. And then this is cervix right there. And then this is all rectum right there. So anus is going to be there. So that's the urinary bladder. And then this is the, the pubic bone. So this is where the pelvis comes together on the midline in the front. And then sacrum is going to be right here. So just imagine the pelvis sort of going bowed that way. Okay. Male, it's actually similar. We just take the we take the uterus out of the way, and then we're looking at a bladder and then a rectum, and that's it. Because um, all the male reproductive organs, obviously, for the most part, are on the outside of the body. Bubble bul urethral glands are in the male. Um, they're very hard to see, and I think most of these hardly even show them. Yeah. They sit immediately underneath the bladder, or excuse me, underneath the prostate gland. But this one, I don't even think they're trying to show them. Okay, I have a picture here, but... Yeah, the problem is in the bowl. I, I won't ask. And the, there's a lot of uh, variation in the male reproductive tracts and in the females between species. Um, yeah, so I, I'd be a little careful with that. I mean, they still have vesicular glands. The prostate looks just different. The bulbo-urethral glands are very different, though, in the large animals. They're a lot more developed. Like, a cat doesn't have bulbo-urethral glands at all. Um, and in, in human males, they're very, very small. But they would look sort of like a pea sitting underneath the prostate gland. Um, it would be hard for me to tag it. Um, you know, I could say, you know, name two out of the three male accessory sex glands or something like that, but it would definitely be hard for me to tag on a specimen for sure. Where's this at again? Uh, epididymis. On here. So that's going to be this ridge running okay, the length yeah. of the testicle. Oh, I don't remember. Um, the, the ductus deferens or the vas deferens forms at the tail of the epididymis. So basically the sperm, when they're produced, they're going to move into the epididymis. They mature there for, depends on the, the species, and then they're going to migrate out of the epididymis up into the ductus deferens or into that vas deferens. And then during ejaculation, they'll, they'll go into the lower portion of urinary tract. So this is the vas deferens? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to see there. It's this tan or sort of buff colored structure running underneath the veins. Um, yeah, they're trying to depict it right here where it's wrapping around. Yeah. Yeah, so this would come up, go into the body, wrap around, and then it passes in through the sort of the backside of the prostate gland. So the ureter is going to be what's taking urine that's being produced in the kidneys down into the urinary bladder. Um, so it's going to be this tube on this structure, yeah. So the what? Uh, the ureter. So the ureter is going to convey urine from the kidney to the bladder. And then the urethra is going to take the bladder that's, or excuse me, it's going to take the urine in the bladder and convey that to the outside world. So you have ureter right here and then urethra right there. Me. This is the adrenal gland, mm -hmm. right? Yep, the adrenal or suprarenal, either one's fine. 
for the human. This is the one in the cat. The the ure or the um, the adrenal glands aren't in direct contact with the, the kidney. Um, they're roughly in the same spot, but they're just a little sort of P-shaped structure that hangs out what is in front. This? So it's called the uh, ampulla of the um, of the ureter. You don't need to know it though. Um, uh, so anal canal is going to be in the female. It's right here. It's just the space. So you have the anal sphincter, which uh, basically maintains fecal continence. So that's how you can basically hold it if you have to go to the bathroom. It's because the sphincter will tighten up. Anal canal is the space that that sphincter creates. Right here. Exactly. Yep. Same location in men versus women, uh, more or less. Um, so they don't have it cut away, but the external anal sphincter like is right there. So basically the first sort of knuckle that your finger is in um, is roughly going to... So this is the sigum? This is the Exactly. Okay. Um, Say that again. Oh, seminal vesicle. Yep, absolutely. Um, so I think what they're trying to show here is where the ductus deferens is entering, um, the, the prostate or the bladder, because this is all going to be prostate gland right there. Um, these are going to be the ureters. Um, I, well, actually, it's hard to know for sure, because um, if that tube was connected there, then it would have to be part of the ureter. Um, if these are supposed to be going here, then I'd say that that's the ductus deferens. Because usually the ductus deferens sort of passes through the seminal vesicles and into the bladder. So it's sort of an odd location. Um, but I think on this model, you could argue it either way. Um, I don't think it's specific enough. So you can call this what? Call I would call this the ductus deferens in this model if this tube was supposed to go in there, which I think it is. It looks like the hole's drilled there specifically. Um, assuming this is how this came from the factory, then I'd say this has to be the ductus deferens, and then this is going to be, I mean, this is the ureter no matter what. There's no question about it. Um, but if they if they were trying to glue it in like that, then I'd say, oh, well, then they're trying to depict the ureter. But then it's like, well, where's the ductus deferens then? Mm -hmm. Which is why I think that this has to be ductus deferens. Because okay. there's two sets of tubes on each side. I mean, there's there's sort of four tubes that all convey right there, two of which are going to be the ductus deferens. The other two are going to be the ureters. It's, it's, it's too... Did you go over the female, like the ovary, the fallopian tube? Did you no. Go over that? Um, so on the female, um, the sort of almond-shaped structure right there is going to be the ovary. Right there? Yeah, and then that pink tube that wraps the around it is going to be the fallopian tube, or um, if they use another the name... Pardon? Is this one the fimbria? Yeah, so the fimbria are these little feathery little tips that are on the end of the oviduct or on the fallopian tube. Mm -hmm. Which one? You're saying, he said it's about fimbria. What? Oh, the fimbria? Um, so what happens is the... Um, oh, we don't need to know that one, right? Okay, yeah, if it's not on there, you okay. don't need to know it. It's All right, so that's the ovary, and mm -hmm. this is the fallopian tube. Uh, the, yeah, the pink is going to be the fallopian tube. Okay. Where's the labia majora? In? So labia majora are going to be this structure right here. Um, it's the, the outermost portion of the external female genitalia, and then just immediately within that are going to be a second set called the labia minora. And they basically keep the vaginal opening closed. Um, to prevent, you know, bacteria and things like that from entering. But yeah, so the larger structure is labia majora, the smaller structure is labia minora. Okay.